All right, let's kick this off. We've got ourselves uh, a period of time where the population went from uh, about 75 million to 76 million. In the same time period, the population of the south region of the country went from 121 million to 122 million, give or take. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to compare these two uh, relative growth rates. So the equation I'm going to be working with is uh, relative growth. And you probably remember that's going to be a new minus old over old. Old. And I actually have to do two of these. One is from the western region, and one is from the south region. And uh, the, so the new version, let's see, the new is going to be 76. So it'll be 76, uh, and I'll fill that in, minus the 75. Let's see. I don't think that it, well, that looks like it's right. And then the 75 gets repeated. So I apologize for the handwriting, of course. Uh, and then from the south, the new is the 122. 122. And I'm going to subtract the old. And divide by the old. Now, uh, I'm not going to uh, even attempt this by hand because I just I really don't want to. Uh, and uh, what we're going to get out of this is we're going to get a number that looks like a 0. Um, See zero point zero one and then some stuff and then a zero point zero one one and some stuff. Okay, and what we're looking for is an answer that quantitatively compares those relative growth rates. Uh, this is this is where it's going to be a little bit um, a little bit interesting. Uh, so what we're going to say is well, I mean those growth rates, uh, the growth rates are equal. Uh, within a tenth of a percent. Um, and just because I'm going to make sure uh, I get the, because it's quantitatively, I need a number. Um, I said that they're equal. Um, each is 1.1%. Make sure that I report that completely. Okay, let's do the second part of this. Uh, in 1995, uh, the median price was that much. In 2016, the median price was that much. So we're talking about houses. So if the CPI in 1995 was there, okay, that matches with the first one, right? And the CPI in 2016 was that, that matches with the second one. Write a quantitative state sentence comparing the rate of increase with the overall inflation rate. Okay, so let's take a look at what happens with this uh, the houses. So if, I, I'm actually going to have two problems that I do here. The first is going to be the uh, uh, prices comparison, and the other is going to be just inflation. And each one of those is going to follow the same rule. We're talking about relative uh, relative growth. Uh, so that's going to be the new minus the olds over the olds. Okay, so for the prices, I get, uh, let's see, the new price was 314 and the old price was 13.6, like that, divided by 13.6. Okay, and over here for the inflation, I get, uh, let's see, CPI was 240 is the, the, uh, the later one. And I'm going to take away the 152.4. Okay, I just want to make sure that I've got this right. If I draw a quick picture, uh, the prices before, uh, let's see, that was in 1995 compared to in 2016. I'm just double checking this. Here the price was 136. And here the price was higher, 314. Okay, so yeah, so I'm getting relative increase. So when I, I get done with this, I should have a nice, um, a nice number out of this. And I get 1.305-ish. Um, uh, and this one I get, um, 0 0.575-ish. Okay, I think I've got that right. Okay, so these are two growth rates. And uh, what you see is the inflation rate is lower. Okay, so it grew by 50% or 57%. And here it grew by 130% just about. Um, so I can say, uh, let's see, home prices grew 130.5 percent 
the inflation rate was 57.5%. And therefore, I can say, let's see, what is that? It's about double. I can, I can do better than that. Uh, 1.305 over 5, uh, 0.575. Uh, that's about 2.3. Okay, so the uh, home prices grew about 2.3 times the inflation rate. All right, that should do pretty nicely. Okay, uh, we've got a bicycle. It sells for 75000 If you buy on the nothing down easy payment, so no, no payments, uh, but you pay none of the money back, how much do you owe after 25 years? 6% uh, daily. Oh, that's actually two facts. I'm going to see if I can get that. 6% compounded daily. Okay, this is not uh, this is not one of those comparison new old problems. This is going to be, uh, this is just compound interest, right? Uh, so compound interest means that I'm going to use, uh, let's see, it's the 1 plus R over N, something like that. Okay, and it looks like if I just list these out, P is going to be 75,000 because that's how much I have to pay off. Uh, R is going to be, let's see, the APR is 6%. Uh, I'm going to fix that. That's going to be 0 0.6. The N, that's daily. That's uh, daily. That's 365. That's how many times it happens in the course of a year. Then the Y is 25. So setting this up, I get uh, A is equal to 75,000 times 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 365 uh, multiplied by the, let's see, it's the N is 365 times the number of years. Wow, that's compounding a whole bunch. Uh, but it's, uh, its daily interest is actually pretty low. Uh, when you throw that into a calculator, I get, uh, let's see, 33605.24, like 7-ish. That's a 4, by the way. Okay, so uh, I need to round to the nearest dollar in the answer. So when I actually answer this, let's see, units is dollars. Uh, 336085. And uh, remember, use a calculator to solve this guy. All right, last one on number one. You and your family need to buy a three-bedroom home. That doesn't matter. North Bend, Washington, doesn't matter. You do your research and find you can buy one for, there we go. All right, we have a minimum down payment. Okay, so we're going to take money off of this. And then we're going to finance over 30 years at an APR of 4%. Okay, and it's going to be, what would our payment be each month? This I, I was thinking this was going to be a compound interest, but this looks like it's going to be a, a payment. Uh, payment plan set up. So let's see, that's the payment is equal to, and we're going to take our principal, multiply it by R over N, 1 minus, oh gosh, what is this? It looks like compound interest, 1 plus R over N, but it's to the negative. Yeah, that should do it. Uh, remember when you put this into the calculator, be careful about that top part because it gets a little confusing. Okay, listing out my facts, I get P is going to be, let's see, it's not, we're not going to borrow that whole thing. We're going to borrow this minus the 55,000. Okay. And R will be, that's the 0 0.04 because it's 4%. And will be uh, monthly, right? We're going to be paying it off, oops, sorry, monthly. So that's a 12 because 12 months in a year. And then the Y is 30. Okay, so when I fill this in, it's going to be, Payment is equal to, let's see, that subtraction I think I can do in my head. If I get it wrong, you might want to double check it. Uh, let's see, the R over N is 0 0.04 over 12. 1 minus, okay, 1 plus, this is the 0 0.04 over 12 again. And then raised to the, oh, this is going to be a little tricky, to the negative 12 times 30. And why? Yeah, there we go. So put this into the calculator. Uh, be careful. You'll probably need to make sure this gets set up. And what do I get out of that? I'm getting um, something like 
and then some stuff. Okay, so I need to round to the nearest cent, so I'm rounding to there. So that means I get 2,000, oh, units is dollars, 2,387.08, and that should do it.